Hey kids, it's the best in fly here, hope you're well. Out and about on a glorious winter's day on another bike review. And uh, I'm pleased to say today I'm uh, on a bike from Honda. This is the 2020 Africa Twin Adventure Sport. So if you're interested in this motorcycle, stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so the uh, 2020 Africa Twin then has had some uh, massive changes. I rode the uh, Africa Twin when it came out in this incarnation a year or so ago, or a couple of years ago now probably actually. Uh, I rode the standard bike and the Adventure Sport, and I have to say the Adventure Sport I was very, very impressed with indeed. The only thing that uh, let that bike down, I thought, was it was just so massive in terms of its height. I'm only a shortish fella at five foot eight, and that bike was something like 900 odd millimetre seat height. I just couldn't get my feet on the deck, I was on tippy toe, so every time I stopped it felt somewhat ponderous. I'm pleased to say Honda have uh, made a big change on this version of the Adventure Sport and that now the seat is much much lower so for shorties like me the bike is much more usable. In fact the seat is now eminently adjustable you can get a standard seat and I'll go through the uh, specs shortly when I do the walk around. Uh, but not only can you uh, have the standard uh, seat that adjusts between a range but also you can get a lower seat height and you can get a higher seat as well uh, depending on your size when you actually purchase the bike so they've catered for everybody on this one so that's a big plus for me it may not sound that important but believe me the, the other bike the old bike seemed ponderous this one don't have that problem on get my feet flat on the deck so that's great the other massive change new incredible electronics on it including this tft they've really gone to town on this one it's got uh, a six axis imu whatever one of those is it sounds uh, i thought there were only three axes but uh, there you go turns out there are six maybe it's something to do with the multiverse oh no that's multiple dimensions anyway let's not worry about that too much but anyway it's got very clever electronics the best lean angle sensitive abs the best lean angle sensitive traction control anti-wheelie all that sort of stuff is in here slightly changed geometry tweaks the engine all sorts of change on the bike effectively well it's not a new bike but it, it feels to me pretty much like a new bike and the big difference between this one and the one I rode before a couple of years ago is this is the DCT version the dual clutch transmission which basically means it's got an automatic gearbox you can think of it in those terms it's not quite the same as an automatic gearbox you get in a car but basically once you select drive on here you don't then have to use a clutch in fact there isn't a clutch look there's no lever here in fact there is a lever here here look where the but it's way out the way it's like a brake lever what that actually is is a handbrake so if you stop the bike on the hill on a hill obviously you can't put it in gear uh, to stop it rolling away honda thought of that and got this brake here you pull that in you pull this other little lever it locks it in place and that means the bike won't roll away so that's a great thing so i have ridden dct bikes before I'm a big fan of, uh, of it. This one is particularly smooth. You just The gear changes are pretty much imperceptible, I have to say. Having said all that, I've not ridden the bike much yet. This is my first impressions review, and this is the first ride I've had on this bike. I've literally been on it for 10 minutes, and I noticed that uh, it's got very little fuel, so I'm gonna go and get some fuel on board. Happy to say that uh, Honda UK have very kindly lent me this bike for a couple of weeks, so I'm gonna get to know it, and uh, this is my next long-term bike. So if you are interested in the Africa Twin, stick around to the channel. There'll be uh, a few more videos to come yet on this bike. So just while I'm stuck in a bit of traffic heading up uh, towards the local fuel station, let's just go through some of the practical items on the bike. The first thing, comfort. Well, actually, something that struck me when I jumped on, the seat on here is really hard. It could not be described as a soft seat. Again, I think there are accessory seats available, something called a comfort seat. I don't know why manufacturers do that. Why don't they just put the comfort one on in the first place? If this isn't the comfort one, what does it make it? Anyway, whatever, it's hard. But in terms of the riding position itself, it's a very comfortable riding position. Uh, my legs are at almost a right angle. Um, slightly acute, but not quite. Pegs nicely mid-set. Um, handlebars nice and wide. Feels very much the same sort of seating position as, say, for example, a 1250 GS, which is a super comfortable bike. So yeah, this is very, very comfy. The other thing that I uh, notice immediately is this windscreen. It's quite tall, and I am looking through it, even though this is on its lowest setting. You can adjust it, by the way, when, not when you're on the move, because you have to squeeze these bits here either side, and it lifts up and down. This is on its lowest setting, yet I'm still looking through it. Again, as I say, I'm a short fella. Uh, so that may or may not be an issue for you. I personally like if I've got a screen on a bike, I like to look over it. There's just something funny about looking through a screen. Other practical matters, the mirrors on here work beautifully well. Nice and stable image, you can see loads of stuff behind, no problem there. And once I've got it topped up with fuel, we'll get a chance to see what she's like a bit more handling wise. 
The other thing that immediately strikes me as I jump on on this first ride is the switch gear on here. There's a lot of it and it's very complicated. I mean, just look at this left hand cluster. There's loads of stuff going on here. Uh, and I have got a manual, so I need to study that. And almost to underline how complicated it is, Honda even have provided me with an online tutorial, like a simulator of how that works in conjunction with the TFT. The TFT does look amazing. I've got a lot of learning to do on it. Uh, but one of the standout features for me, it uh, also has Apple CarPlay on this, so you can hook it up with your phone, you can do your sat-nav and everything the same as you do with Apple CarPlay in a car, that takes up the top screen, uh, but you've still got the basics at, in the bottom screen here, the fact that I'm in drive and it's got my speed, so uh, even when you've got it in Apple CarPlay mode, you've got the basic um, functionality that you need of a speedo, etc, on the bottom LCD panel, so that's a, that's a nice touch. All right, I'm going to have a topper up with some fuel and then we'll uh, we'll see what the bike can do. We'll get out of the way of this traffic, get on some more interesting roads and out of the way of these white vans already. Right, here's the uh, fuel station. Let's see if there's any dramas filling up. I don't expect there will be. Looks like there's a spot here. Okay, and when you come to halt on this, because it's the DCD box, you can put it into neutral by pressing this button here. It takes it, toggles it between neutral drive and sports mode. Put it into neutral and then kill it in the usual way. Right, let's get it filled up. Right, no dramas filling up, I'm glad to say, except that uh, one white van has been replaced by another. And getting past him might be a bit of a pain, so let's, uh, let's come out this way. Good uh, chance to see what the bike's like to move around. Actually, it doesn't feel too, too bad. Lots of places to get hold of. Good turning circle. Quite light to lift off its stand. Comes over quite a long way, though oddly. Right then, let's get this show back on the road. Right, so starting the usual way, hit drive, there we go, and then uh, ride it like a scooter. Right, we're off, that gearbox is doing its thing again. Witchcraft in action that is. Right, let's go down here for a change. This isn't uh, somewhere that I think I've ever done a bike review. Amazing those uh, downshifts in particular, you just, uh, you just can't feel them happening. Touch screen as well, this uh, TFT. Does work through my gloves. Bit of a faff to find where the indicator is with all those buttons there. I guess it would get into uh, muscle memory, but it's so complicated, this left hand switch gear, the indicator button is way down the bottom there. Quite hard to get at. If you're only riding the one bike, I guess you get used to it, but I ride lots of bikes, that's going to be hard to get used to. The DCT as well, if you want to uh, ride it a bit more like a normal bike, you've got these little paddles here, up and down shift paddles, so you can force it to up or down shift if you want it to, but so far so good, it doesn't seem to be catching, you know, selecting the wrong gear at any point. Why would you want to use that? Glad to see the roads are, I was just about to say dry, but uh, then I come into a wet patch. <laughs> Weather's been atrocious the last, uh, last few days, I've had the bike for a few days, I haven't had a chance to get out on it, it's been uh, a real shame. A bit of slippery mud and stuff around here as well. Maybe not the best road to have come up. It's going to make the nice clean bike all dirty. Oh well. This one's got the fancy suspension on it as well. The electronic suspension, which is, uh, I think, optional on the bike. It adjusts 50,000 times a second or something ridiculous like that, according to what the riding conditions are. Oh, I can say it's a very smooth ride. The engine on this is a big twin. 1100cc. It's gained 100cc since the old model, or thereabouts. I guess that's probably because it uh, needs to be Euro 5 compliant, so a lot of the manufacturers have done that. It's interesting that I'm doing 27 miles an hour and the bike has selected fourth gear. If I was coming up here, I'd be in second. Not complaining too much, the engine, a little bit thumpy. It went to fifth at one point there, when I, again, I'm not going very fast, am I, to be, go, to be in fifth. It's obviously uh, geared for economy, I guess. The engine on here, parallel twin, 270 degree firing order. So it sounds quite nice, has to be said. Well, this is one steep hill here. These GoPros never show the steepness of hills, but this is as steep as they get. Why did I choose to come down here? What an idiot. A rubbish road for a test ride. Now, I've got some behind me, and there's a problem. The glare off that TFT, it's a shiny screen. Oh, look, there goes a uh, monk jack deer, two of them. Whoops, let's not get too carried away, and he came off the bike then. Uh, yeah, so the screen, I've just noticed with the sun, it very glary. Uh, I don't know why they make TFTs with shiny screens. BMW do the same. You really need to buy yourself a uh, some sort of cover to go on there. 
check out my sponsor Speedo Angels. They make excellent matte screens for such things. We we'll just dumb that down if you get one of these and stop that glare. Don't get the chance to mention those guys very often, so thanks to those guys for sponsoring the channel. They've been with me for ages. Well, I'm just going to try the front brake, which is excellent. A little bit of fork dive, more than I'm used to, because I'm used to riding the GS, of course. It's got the funny front end that doesn't dive at all, but it's not excessive, the dive. Now, you'd certainly get used to that. The brake works really nicely indeed. Let's just try the rear brake. Rear brake is absolutely fine. So shortly, <laughs> I promise you, there are better roads where I can uh, try the handling a bit more. But in the meantime, just up here, I'll uh, do the walk around on the bike and show you what she looks like and talk you through the spec in the usual way. Oh no, I'll turn around and get it so the sun's in the right spot. Fancy gates. I wonder who lives there. Feels a little bit odd doing a U-turn with that DCT like that. A little bit snatchy. I prefer it with a clutch where you can just feather it. That just felt a little bit snatchy as I was doing that U-turn. But that's the only downside I've seen so far of the DCT. Right, let's find a little sunny spot here. And I'll show you around the bike. Okay, so I'm going to select neutral again. And uh, kill the bike. There we go. And kill the ignition. Right, and actually there's a chance to show you my feet flat on the deck either side so now suddenly the adventure sport is a very accessible bike even for shorties like me side stand very easy to get down but let's just move over a bit so it's on some concrete there we go and here we go the uh, 2020 honda africa twin adventure sport i think you'll agree a really nice looking machine Alrighty, let me get the uh, other camera out in the usual way and i'll talk you through the spec Okay, so here we go, uh, and I'm starting to think this maybe wasn't the best possible spot for doing the walk around, as I've already had a couple of cars almost hit me, so uh, sorry if, uh, oh and here comes another one, so uh, sorry if this has to be a bit abrupt. Anyway, let's go through the spec in the usual way then. First off, the engine on the bike, as I say, 1100cc uh, is what it's badged at, but it's actually 1084cc parallel twin with that 270 degree uh, crank. They've got this lovely finish on it, this sort of uh, bronzed uh, finish on there that I think looks really good. Um, puts out 100.6 brake horsepower at 7,000. 500 rpm so by no means the most um, powerful adventure bike that you can get for sure but certainly I think 100 horsepower is enough for anyone in the real world I suppose that makes it a mid-size adventure bike crazy isn't it that we're talking about 100 horsepower as a mid-size bike these days 105 newton meters of torque or 77.4 pound feet if you're in the old money at 6250 rpm uh, brakes on here I mentioned they were good on the front here we go, they're Nissan badged calipers on petal discs. That's the 310mm disc with a four pot caliper. Uh, and then on the rear, uh, we've got a 256mm uh, uh, two pot caliper on there. And there's an additional uh, caliper underneath that uh, cover, I think, as well, which is for that uh, handbrake that I talked about earlier. Okay, suspension-wise, the front uh, shower 45mm forks fully adjustable. This one, as I said, has got uh, the fancy electronic suspension, which is an extra. Uh, and the back uh, shower Prolink with, uh, again, is uh, adjustable for preload, preload and rebound, but this one's got the fancy suspension, so I can't really show you that on here. Uh, seat height I talked about, standard bike, 850mm uh, to 870 This is the standard one, I've got it on its 850mm setting, get my feet flat on the deck as a 5 foot 8 chap. As I say, you can get um, optional low seat or high seat as well if you need it higher or lower than that. Weight of this, 248 kilograms curb weight, uh, which means fueled. So, actually that's pretty, that's not bad for a big adventure bike, that's relatively light. Tank capacity on here, big old tank, 24.8 uh, litres that'll carry, uh, which is uh, excellent for a bike of this type. 57.6 miles per gallon claimed, so if you work the numbers out, it'll give you around about 300 miles out of that tank, which is a great thing for this type of bike. Electronics, I said it's laden with them. All sorts of improvements over the previous bike. Six axis IMU, six riding modes, cornering ABS, etc. Wheelie control, that TFT I showed you, Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth connectivity. It's got full LED lighting all round, including uh, cornering lights here. Those clever ones that come on when you uh, lean the bike over. Uh, cruise control is standard, uh, heated grips are standard, which is excellent stuff. So yeah, really well well equipped bike. And price wise, the non DCT model, thirteen thousand and forty nine, or this one with the DCT, thirteen thousand nine hundred and forty nine. So you're paying nine hundred quid extra for that automatic gearbox functionality. It also comes with a two year unlimited miles warranty, by the way. 
Uh, so there we are, that's, uh, that's the spec of the bike. I'm quite keen to get off this road, uh, because I don't want to get killed, and ride us some more. So let's uh, jump back on and see what the handling's like on some different roads. So despite all those electronics, I'm glad to say, actually, that this doesn't have keyless ignition. That's one of those things that I don't get on with. For some reason, I know there are big fans of it out there, but for me, the emission of keyless ignition on here is not a, is not a bad point at all. Right, let's fire up again, we're in neutral. You've got to remember, because obviously when you're in neutral, you can rev it in the usual way. If you're in drive, if you did that, you'd be off. Okay, so you have to hit this to fire up that TFT. Can't tell you much about this at the moment, I need to study the manual, but there's absolutely so much information here on the TFT. Again, via this, you can scroll through uh, different presentations, if you like. So that was the touring one, this is urban presentation. Let's move on to another. Gravel, off-road, sorry, flash by there, user-defined uh, modes. All sorts of stuff. I personally quite like the tour one. I'd use this as a touring bike, so that's what I'm leaving it set on. You've got all sorts of stuff here, showing you the level of ABS, traction, engine braking, uh, everything there, and uh, it's so tailorable. It's unbelievable. This. It's a. Uh, it's a really nice screen, actually. Nice and uh, nice and clear, and to say everything you possibly need on there. It's just this uh, complexity here that I'm not so keen on. Right. So for remember to hit drive. <laughs> Nothing behind. Let's uh, turn round up here and we'll get back onto some reasonable roads to see what she's like through the twisties. Pretty good turning circle on here, it has to be said. Just have to be really... The throttle is quite sensitive at slow speeds. I have to say that electronic suspension on here is lovely. It's uh, giving me a very smooth ride, despite the seat that I said was a bit hard. The ride quality is actually lovely on here. So based on this first ride, I think if I was uh, going for one of these, I quite possibly would go for the uh, DCT actually because as I say I would use this bike more as a touring vehicle and it just makes for a nice relaxed ride. I think if I was going to use it as a multi-purpose bike and to go off-road which of course it's got great off-road capability not that I'm going to try it because I don't want to break somebody else's bike <laughs> then in that case if I was going off-road I'd probably not have the DCT. All right, just trying to cancel the indicator and I changed the display into something else. <laughs> Bit of a pain in gloves that if I can get back to the tour one. There we go. Wind protection on here is quite nice. Getting a little bit of turbulent air off the top of that screen. I wonder if I can change it while I'm on the move. This isn't recommended. There we go. It's in its top position now. And it does quite a nice job of protecting me from the wind, actually. Of course, I am looking right through the screen now, which is beautifully optically clear, by the way. Weirdly, I still can feel some wind Sort of at the, well, I suppose at the size of my head it's not weird at all, look, because it's only a narrow screen. But it's not, it's nice and uh, there's no turbulence there, it's perfectly adequate screen. So wind protection wise, weather protection, very nice indeed. Lovely and light in the corner. Yeah, handling feels nice. Let's shove her into sports mode. There we go, we're in sports now. I was just finding in that drive mode, it was holding onto the gears a little bit longer than I would have liked. It felt like it was lugging a bit, but in sports mode, suddenly it sharpened the bike right up. It feels much better. I think, uh, yeah, nice. If I was going for the DCT version, I think I'd only ever be in sports or neutral. I wouldn't really worry about drive mode. Very nice. So this being a 1100cc bike, Actually, I suppose, puts it in the upper category of sports bikes. I was going to say it's got competitors, things like the Triumph, the new Triumph 900 Tiger, the um, Ducati Multistrada 950, but actually you could argue it's more competitive with the uh, Multistrada 1200 and the GS 1250. It sort of sits between those two brackets and a bit of a class of its own, so it's up to you whether you think of it as a small big bike or a big small bike. <laughs> Whatever, it is a big bike. What I do like about it is that those prices, you get in all the kit, with the exception of the fancy suspension, which I'm not sure how much extra that is, but you could probably add another grand, I imagine. And you end up getting a bike that's, you know, still less than 14 grand. If you bought uh, the Multistrada or the BMW and you spec it right up, you're looking closer to 18 grand. And that is a hell of a chunk of change. I'm not sure those bikes are that much better. Yeah! Sounds lovely, actually. Yeah, sports mode is the way to go. Unfortunately, I'm stuck behind this vehicle and there's not really any chances to overtake here. 
So as a first ride out then, what am I thinking on the bike? Well, lovely and comfortable. DCT takes a bit, a little bit of getting used to, as does the uh, controls, but I guess it is just a matter of time on the bike, getting used to that. Seat's a little bit hard, but it's very comfortable. Everything else about the bike just works lovely. The TFT works beautifully. If you are very much sitting in the bike and looking through the screen, I don't know whether you like that or not, as a matter of personal choice. Mirrors work well, brakes work well certainly adequate power you don't need more than 100 horsepower and it feels nice and light and agile downshift on this is just incredible right now i'm in sports mode and they've gone i can wind her on fantastic yeah it goes goes really well actually it goes like a sting doesn't feel like uh, there's any lack of power there whatsoever lovely lovely bike yeah she comes alive once you wind her up a bit nice machine I like it a lot all right well as I say the good news is I've got this bike for a couple of weeks so I'm gonna to get to know the bike as well as I possibly can and uh, before she goes back to Honda UK I must just say thank you to those guys by the way for lending me the bike very kind of you before it goes back to those guys I'm gonna get under the skin of the bike and I'm gonna bring you a video of everything I've learned about it all the plus points but also the negative things the sort of things you wouldn't pick up if maybe you just went out for a one hour test ride so as i say if you're interested in the uh, africa twin adventure sport stick around to the channel stay tuned much more to come if this is the first time you've been to my channel thanks very much for watching i don't just do bike reviews here on the missing flyer but i do all sorts of stuff bits and pieces about looking after your bike in the garage i do uh, the odd live stream i haven't done one for a while I must do those soon I do a monthly bike news feature i do uh, trips and tours at home and abroad Basically, uh, anything and everything, I try and cover it here on the Mistenden Flyer. If you haven't done so already, do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to uh, have you join me next time. Alrighty, that's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mistenden Flyer. Cheerio.